Welcome back guys. Today's video is mostly going to be targeted towards people who are about to get pigs or maybe have begun thinking about possibly getting pigs for your homestead. Now this is only our second year keeping pigs so take this with a grain of salt but these are the things that I have done around here that have proven to be extremely effective and we're headed toward a very successful year with the pigs. Now pigs are just like any other farm animal and people too. There's several things that they just simply need to survive and the first thing of course is a good source of food. So I want to show you very quickly my food setup. Now the main focus of this video is going to be on setting up a pig pen that is very very low maintenance and what I mean by that is a pig pig that you pig pen that you don't have to come out and do things to every single day because we have all got enough things to do besides raising animals right so this is one of the cornerstones of my setup here and this is exactly what it looks like this is a food grade pickle barrel and a tire down at the bottom that's cut in half and there's a concrete block on the inside three ingredients right here for a very very inexpensive automatic pig feeder I paid $35 for this barrel at a local feed store the tire was free and if you need to buy a concrete block you don't have one hanging around there two or three dollars I'm not really sure they're really very very little now the biggest advantage of this thing is that I can fill it up and it'll last four pigs for one week and that is significant because instead of having to come out here every single day throw some feed in the pen once or even twice a day all I have to do is fill this up once a week and I can pretty much forget about it now I do come out open the lid and spread the feed around a little bit to even it out so that it comes out but besides that it's extremely easy and extremely low maintenance and I have a video on building this thing on the channel and I'll put a link to that whatever side it tends to show up on if we look down in this feeder you can see that there's actually still a little bit of food left we could move it all around and they've probably got a good two days worth of food left in here so with this barrel I get about seven days of pretty much maintenance free pig feeding again I will come out and smooth the corn smooth the grain out on the top so that it feeds better but I'm sure that could be overcome by drilling a few more holes in the bottom so that it flows out a little more evenly and as far as the type of food that we're using I have been mixing my own pig food now for this year and this is not something that I made up myself this comes from a channel called shrimp tails on YouTube and it's 50 pounds of cracked corn we have a grinder so I'm able to grind the corn it's 12 pounds of soybean meal and it's one pound 10 ounces of mineral and these pigs have been growing like mad with this particular feed and this open feeder our heaviest pig out here is right at 130 pounds four months old and according to my calculations he's currently gaining about two pounds per day which to me seems pretty phenomenal Ooh, you okay now try it there you go Sure am. Now if this is your first year doing pigs, you might not want to fool with making your own food. Last year we elected to not make our own food. It was our first year. And I elected to not make our own food because there was just a whole lot that I didn't know and there was a ton of other things for me to learn besides mixing food. So I just let the factory, the feed mill, whatever, do that for me. I bought it in 50 pound sacks and it created some pretty nice pigs. So if this is your first year this might be one of those things you might want to kick till next year but even if you do decide to get pre-made pig food one of these barrels could be your best friend again if i fill this thing up to the top i don't have to bother with it for seven days which is really makes my life a lot easier and to keep the weather out of this feed i just put an old piece of roofing tin on the top and I weigh it down with a piece of wood and a concrete block and it's worked pretty good so far. The second thing that your pigs are absolutely gonna need is a constant source of good 
fresh, clean water. And I have got two barrels out here to suit that purpose. And the reason that I have two barrels, of course, is keeping with my philosophy of having kind of a hands-off approach. If I fill both of these barrels up, this one right here is, seems to be the one that they favor, probably because it's got two nipples on it. But they all suck this down in maybe four or five days. But at that point, this one's still got a bunch in it. So theoretically, I won't have to water these pigs for seven eight nine days probably if i fill both of these up and just like the feeder that we just looked at this is a very simple and relatively inexpensive solution to take care of your pigs this is the same 35 dollar pickle barrel like we use with the feeder over there and it's got these metal nipples screwed into it and these nipples were a 10 pack off of amazon i forgot how much but they were pretty inexpensive and basically the pigs they figure this out very quickly once you put the barrel in but they come up and they bite down on this nipple with their mouths and the water comes out and they drink it's very very simple the one over there the blue one that you see was $15 at the local feed store that was the one that we used last year for our two pigs and it worked perfectly fine we do have four pigs out there we've got three nipples so they do tend to fight over this sometimes so you could probably put up to four nipples in one of these things and the more pigs that you have of course the more barrels that you're going to need and the more nipples that you're going to need to try to alleviate some of that fighting between the water barrels and i really can't stress enough how important a good constant source of clean water is for pigs you can put dishes of water out here and they'll drink for maybe 10 seconds and they'll immediately turn it over so giving them one of those twice a day is just not going to cut it they're going to step in it they're going to do all kinds of things to it it, and they're going to be very very dehydrated a barrel like this or some other constant source of fresh clean water is really your only option when watering pigs the third thing that your pigs are going to need is some kind of shelter and this is for a couple of different reasons of course pigs naturally can survive out in the wild with no shelter whatsoever we've got a pretty serious epidemic in this country of wild pigs that survive perfectly fine with basically nothing except shade trees however if you want to raise good happy pigs that make the best bacon you're going to want a good shelter for these pigs and this is a very very simple solution and i'll try to link all of this stuff the barrel plans and the shelter plans down in the description of this video but these shelters are super simple and even if you don't have a sawmill like i've got or old roof and tin lying around they can still be made relatively inexpensively this is just a very few two by fours some old roof and tin and some screws and these these should last a pretty good while they're very very tough uh, I've, I've got four pigs with a combined weight of probably pushing 500 pounds and they are they can all four still fit into one of these shelters but they need these shelters for a couple of reasons first to stay cool and second pigs will get sunburned if they don't have a place to get out of the sun and they've got two of these shelters out here and these shelters you can probably make a couple of these in just a few hours with very very basic tools the fourth thing that your pigs are absolutely going to need is a place to get cool a place to waller in the mud a place that we in the south would call a hog waller and this is mine right here and it's a pretty bad example because it's dry right now we'll fill it up towards the end of this video and i'll show you how much they enjoy this but pigs don't have the ability to sweat so they can get overheated pretty easily so this waller they have to have something like that so they can waller in the mud that mud they also use as a sunscreen to prevent sunburn and this is not something that you can skimp on you have to have a waller for your pigs and it's also a huge plus if you can find them a place that has lots of shade. Another thing that your pigs are definitely going to need is some space. Now these pigs out here have got an area that's 150 feet by 150 feet, which ends up being about 22,500 square feet, which for four pigs is a tremendous amount of space. But that gives them some pretty distinct advantages. The first really big advantage is that it creates a much more sanitary environment for them. Pigs have gotten a pretty bad rap historically as being really filthy animals that just wallow in their own filth basically and stink really really bad and the reason that you see pigs sometimes wallowing in their own filth is because that's the only option they've got they have a small space to live so they do everything right there if you give pigs some space 
they're not going to do that here they tend to go and they'll eat and they'll drink and they'll sleep in their little huts here but when it's time to do their business when it's time to poop they find another spot to do that and it creates a pretty clean situation out here uh, another great advantage that all this space gives them is that it lets the pigs be pigs they can go and they can walk around they can get lots of good exercise and they can root they can find grubs which are a free source of protein they can chew on little saplings and eat leaves and whatever else they want to do out here and it just makes them extremely happy and happy pigs make good meat so one thing that you're definitely going to need is some space even if they do have space and you leave the pigs in one spot for a little bit too long you are going to have some smell issues i'm noticing that out here it's probably about time to move these pigs because it's getting a little bit stinky uh, also if you leave them in one spot for too long you're going to get more and more parasites in the dirt which of course is going to translate to more parasites in your pigs and a more frequent worming regimen for them so it certainly is good to move them around on their paddocks but if you give them space on those paddocks it's going to be much more sanitary and you're going to have some pretty happy pigs Another thing that you are going to need for your pigs is a decent system of fencing and let me show you what I'm using here. So here's the system that I'm working with here and there's really no one right pig fencing system. If you ask five different people you're probably going to get at least six different answers but this is the one that has worked for me extremely extremely well. There's one single electrified strand of wire running along the inside of a non-electrified electric netting. I say electric netting because you could electrify it if you wanted to. This one is not hooked up to any power. This one on the inside is hooked up to a solar powered fence charging unit just from Tractor Supply. Now basically this gives them two layers of protection or two layers of a barrier. The first barrier is this electrified strand. It creates a mental barrier because they know that if they touch it they're going to get shocked. The second one, this green netting right here, gives them a visible barrier. Um, now I don't know how pigs think exactly, but to me it seems they would say, well it looks to me that I can't get through that netting and if I try I'm going to get shocked by the wire on the inside, so today maybe I just won't give this a try. Now neither one of these are physical barriers, only a good hog panel or a good metal fencing system is a physical barrier. They could theoretically get through this but they don't try because they can see that as a visible barrier and they know they're going to get hurt if they try so it works extremely well now if you're just getting started and you really don't want to sink a lot of money into this project of pigs uh, you don't even need this right here you can just buy the wire and you can buy some of these very cheap things at tractor supply and you can train them to this right here and they'll they'll be fine that's exactly what we did last year when we finally let our two pigs our first two pigs out on pasture and we only had two wires there was one low wire and one that was just a little bit higher and they respected it they had been trained already with wires on the inside of their cattle panels and it was fine they never escaped from those from those wires as long as we had them out there which was about a month or so so uh, if you don't want to sink a ton of money into this and i would definitely encourage you not to sink a ton of money into it until you think until you figure out if you like it or not uh, you don't need all of this expense um, get them trained on those kinds of wires uh, they'll be fine now the fencing that we just looked at is actually only one component of keeping your com your pigs confined in one area the other two factors there and they are equally as important is what we talked about earlier and that's a constant supply of fresh clean water and a good supply of good nutritious food pigs that are hungry or thirsty are naturally going to want to try to break out of where they live in order to find food and water but pigs that are full and not thirsty are going to be much less likely to break out and go looking for things somewhere else and that creates less stress for the pig and if we're talking about how to create a uh, almost maintenance free pig situation for the homesteader that's going to create a lot less hassle for you Well, I was hoping they would come out for their waller, but um, nap time is pretty serious to them.
The pigs did decide to come out from their nap to go for a little dip in the pool this afternoon and get them a little snack. And while they're doing that, I'll go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, again, take this video, this information kind of with a grain of salt because this is only our second year. And I hope that I can look back on this video in a couple of years and say, man, look how far we've come. I thought I had it figured out a couple of years ago, but uh, we have a much better system now. So I certainly hope to keep improving. But this video is really targeted toward people who uh, might be thinking about getting pigs or you already have a line on some pigs and you're trying to get a spot set up for them. If you're anything like me, uh, you've got other things in life that you need to do and you can't spend half of a day every single day taking care of pigs. That's just an impractical thing to, uh, to have to do. But this is the setup that is working extremely well for us. It only really requires food and water. Uh, maybe once a week um, and it's it's just easy the pigs are very happy the pigs are very healthy they're growing very fast they don't try to escape so I it, it's, it's working for us so I figured I would share our experience with you uh, the only thing that does require input pretty frequently is water for the waller because it soaks into the ground naturally I've got this hose out here so it's not that big of a deal and I do enjoy coming and hosing the pigs down with water while they play out there so that's an enjoyment for me actually but that's going to do it for this video I hope you found something in this video at least a little bit helpful and uh, I'll see you on the next one